What's up, YouTubers? Pokey Jedi Trek here, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to put up a live stream. I just had some technical difficulties, but I'm going to make it up to you. Instead of doing a live stream, I have decided I am going to just do a conventional YouTube video. So, so with our with our Q and A session underway, let's get started. First, the user James Vlogs, also known as the Ocean James. He comments on my videos often, and our first question is, well, he left five, but I'm going to answer one at a time. His first question is, if you could have any job or jobs, what would it or the jobs be? Well, James Vlogs, I'm going to tell you this. If I had to pick a job, I would go into the movie industry, because... I love movies and television so much, I even got inspired to write, to type up screenplays. In fact, I even have a resume and a job application ready. I'm just, well, the resume is actually done, but the job application is still a work in progress. I'm thinking about working for a coastal television broadcasting company here in Anchorage to start out with. And then I'm going to be joining... And then I'm going to work my way up in ranks in the movie industry so I can become a director. In fact, I even have some original content um, typed up. I'm thinking about distributing it towards Touchstone Pictures. For those who are curious about my original content, comment down below. And I'll, just, and I'll tell you the details. And then his second, um, and then his second question is, What inspired you to start making YouTube videos? Well, the biggest inspiration for me to make YouTube videos was I've been watching a lot of comedic stuff on YouTube when I was younger, and I thought, hell, I could, I could do something better than that. I could try going for YouTube. And what inspired me to join YouTube was I was extremely talented. I was so talented. I, I was so good at editing videos and and stuff like that, that I decided I'm going to open up a YouTube channel. Um, when I was setting, when I, I got my very first computer for Christmas back in 2011. And when I was, and when I was setting up a Google account, I had an opportunity to set up a YouTube channel. And knowing that, and then knowing that my YouTube channel has been, that a YouTube channel could be great, I figured... I should open up a YouTube channel, and and eventually I decided to. I was trying to, th but but the real trick was coming up with a name, and then I figured there are three animated shows I really liked at the time called Star Wars: The Clone Wars, Pokemon, and Star Trek: The Animated Series. Hence the reason my YouTube channel name, because because I really liked those animated shows at the time. So anyway. And then James Vlog's third question is, who do you think is the hottest woman or are the hottest women in Hollywood? Well, I don't, I can't really think of any ladies in Hollywood that are hot. Because I'm not too focused on eye candy. I'm more focused on the action and how cool the ac action when I see movies are. I'm not too focused on eye candy, but it doesn't hurt to look once in a while. And then his fourth question is, how did you become so good at making all of your animated videos? Well, my fourth, well, here's the thing. My first animation I posted on YouTube was called Mario and Luigi Go to the Beach in August of 2012. And, well, if you watch it today, it looks really sloppy and well done because I was 16 years old when I made that and... I don't, and let's just say I've grown up a little bit and I've gotten really, really better. Like, I've been able to add more details, like, and stuff like that. Like, like for female characters, depending on, um, I typically um, animate eyelashes over their eyes, and depending on how old, depending on their age, I might add some body details, like, like hips, huge butts, and breasts, and stuff like that. You know, just to show that, um, how, how far of a long way I've come. And then, 
and then his final qu- and then his fifth and final question is who taught you how to do everything you do in the kitchen was it your grandmother or youtube videos or tv or are you just a natural well my my cooking talents come from when i was um when i was about 11 or 12 years old cuz my father um when i was 7 when my father got divorced so a few months later my father was dating another woman named Stephanie Adams. She's my stepmother now, and Stephanie used to teach me how to cook and stuff. In fact, I learned how to cook from her a few times, and I figured after learning how to cook, I figured I would unleash some of my cooking talents. And it's all thanks to her I learned how to cook. In fact, what in fact that sh- in fact in my cooking videos you see that Chef River jacket I wear. I got it when I was 12 and I'm sh- and I'm really really surprised it still fits me today. So that does it for James Blogs questions. Now, this next question is from a guy called the Bull Crap Patrol because well, he's actually called the BS Patrol, but I don't allow uses of the S word on my YouTube channel, so Hence the reason why I add a bunch of random quotation marks in place of the words to censor them. And if it's audio, like said via audio or voice acting, I, I add TV censor bleeps to them. But anyway, the Bull Crap Patrol says, How, asks, how has autism affected you? Well, autism has affected way, me in a lot of ways. Because when I was... Because... When I was in preschool, when I was, um, during, we were having these sessions where we were announcing, we we were pretending to be the weatherman, and, excuse me, and the microphone that we would use to record, we would use to pretend to be a, to be a weatherman, I would often hallucinate and think that's a, an ice cream cone with three scoops of ice cream on it. Not only that, but... Not only that, but when I was in kindergarten and to the first grade, I would often, I would have thought that I had some sort of sticky, icky stuff on my tongue. And I know my teacher told me not to stick my tongue out at people, but, but it's true. I kept hallucinating that I had something on my tongue and I also would, um, feel like I had to take off my shoes because I had a hallucination that there was that there was a corridor in my foot that had that that was covered in um tin, some sort of tin foil and it had and it was lit up by by orange fluorescent lights I would off yeah cuz a common sign of autism in younger ones is they might hallucinate so so for anybody so for any so anybody who has autism or any other mental disabilities, if you ever have kids, keep a really sharp eye on them because because they might get diagnosed. Oh, one last thing about how autism has affected me is I would often go crazy and I would remember um, certain moments from certain movies and TV shows and I would try to put my own I would think about having my own twist on them. I would often do cra- think about crazy reenactments like who like actor re- like actor replacement and character replacement and stuff like that. And apparently it was a sign apparently I think it was a sign of I think a foresight into the future where I would have I would be able to express some talent. So, yeah. Yeah, that's basically my experience with autism. Don't let it, but don't let the fact that I'm disabled fool you because I am, because as you saw from my YouTube channels, my YouTube videos on my channel, I mean, I am extremely talented. So, anyway, next question comes from Angelie Sage. I don't know how to pronounce the first name word, but Angelie Sage asks, where did you learn to draw? Well, where I learned to draw 
was pretty, um, well, where I learned to draw, I've been drawing since I was like five years, since I was a really little kid, like some, like before I was in elementary, before I was even, before I even hit the first grade was when I, um, was, you started to draw. I was so obsessed with drawing that, um, that I would often draw pictures of, um, of, of certain things like, like. I would draw often draw pictures of iconic moments from movies I watched, like um, like um. See, some of you know that I'm a big fan of the Star Wars franchise. When I was a kid, I would often draw pictures of iconic of some iconic moments from the original Star Wars trilogy. Well, mostly from from A New Hope and Return of the Jedi, because when I was a kid. Even though Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back is one of the best, is considered the greatest movie in this original Star Wars trilogy. When I was a kid, there were three moments from that movie that scared me a lot. The first scene that scared me was the scene in Empire Strikes Back when Han, when Luke Skywalker loses his hand to Darth Vader's lightsaber blade. That was really scary. Two other moments that really frightened me were the moments where Han Solo was tortured and then later frozen in carbonite those scenes used to scare me a lot but i learned to like i learned to deal with them when i was in my sometime in late 2013 was when i discovered when i discovered that they weren't too scary after all it was in late 2013 yeah but anyway back to my drawing topic in fact i've gotten so better at drawing over the years um that um that ah, I can't got my tongue but anyway when i was i was so obsessed with drawing that that eventually when i was one time when i was drawing when i was 16 when i was drawing on my first computer when i was trying to do a painting picture i discovered that is when i discovered um the um that i could try animating via microsoft paint and Needless to say, it's doing, I'm doing a great job. And while the animations themselves may not be well detailed and well thoroughly um, fra framed, but it's what the deep... But that's okay. I've tried my best. And then last, a man named Lex Pesthi. Uh, Pesthi, I don't know how his last name is pronounced, but he said... But, he says that the art in my Christmas special um, is great, and he can't wait for more. Well, Lex, I'm glad you think that because because if you ever want to learn how to animate some, if you ever want to try animating one of these days, I recommend Microsoft Paint, if or any other um, computer painting apps. Because I don't know if you're not aware of this, but the way I animate in my YouTube videos. I try to do um, traditional 2D animations, like kind of like in the style of um, of 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 those classic Disney and Warner Brothers cartoons, like Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse. You know, well, um, I try to do it in that style, but add a special twist. Do it on a computer and not painstakingly draw each frame, draw the um, do each frame draw each frame by frame one at a time so basically when i'm doing it on the computer i add i try to add um, a bunch of basically when i'm doing it on the computer i um i always try to um i always after i'm done drawing the picture i save it and then i erase a like if like if i'm trying to move somebody after i save the picture i erase a leg and then redraw it in a different position and then save again and repeat. I even tr and then you might notice that I did some 3D shots um, when I was um, when I was doing the um, that I was doing sequences from my Star Wars animations where we see the spaceships flying. Anyway, that does it for all my Q and A sessions. I'm sorry I wasn't able to do the live stream, and I sure hope you enjoyed this video. And and also another heads up. Christmas Day, the day after Christmas Day, I am going to be leaving Anchorage to go visit my family down in Seattle, Washington. And my family is going to, and yeah, so 
I will try to get some vlogs up. I'm not too sure though, but I will let you know um, if I'm able to get some vlogs up. If I can get an internet connection. Okay? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you.